I gotta ask this question. Izzo will laugh at this, but Izzo, is 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 Jacob Lane gonna be the Ryan Bowman like in my heart as much? As- <laughs> <laughs> dude, I used to tell everybody, dude, I don't care what I don't care what you say. Ryan Bowman's the best yeah, defensive yeah. line that we have. Like dude, I don't you care have an you- intrusive <laughs> thought. It, it might be something crazy. Noah's sitting there just thinking about Ryan Bowman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, four four QB pressures. Uh he got attributed for one of those is a sack, one of those is a batted ball. Um, it, he definitely was an issue for them and a big reason why they weren't efficient in the past game. So, uh, all right, dog fans, before we hop into the show, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out and we appreciate the support. Thanks to our sponsor, Simply Seattle. We'll be picking out one lucky new subscriber to win free Washington Huskies t-shirt and hat to enter. Just subscribe, drop a comment below, letting us know that you've done it. You can be out there flexing that new Husky drip, that new Husky swag in no time. Plus, don't forget to check out Simply Seattle's QR code at the bottom of the screen, which will take you directly to their website for all your Washington Husky apparel needs. Good luck. Go dogs. Thank you for everything. On today's show, we're going to be getting into the defensive performance in the 35-3 to thrashing of Weber State. I got my guys Izzo and Noah. Then wake up the dubbed up podcast. Fellas, how are we feeling about uh the defensive performance? Steve Belichick, we got a whole new system. Noah, go for it. Yeah. You know, first off, anytime you hold a team to three points, I think that's a huge win. Uh, I mean, I think it could probably be debated for a, a, an hour long show if we really wanted to. They were down 28 nothing and they wanted to kick a field goal. Obviously, at that point in the game, they were pretty much like, let's just try to make sure we get on the board and, you know, for our boosters. So, I think, <laughs> I, I think, I think at the end of the day, man, like, you know, I, I don't think it really, you know, 35, three, I mean, you know, we started off maybe a little bit slow. I, I think we got gashed up the middle a couple of times. Um, and I think, I think our big boys with Bandis and, uh, you know, Valdez, I think they might've been playing a little bit timid, you know, the first game they, they actually, you know, both started for UW. Um, but I mean, once they kind of settled down, man, you really saw why the coaches, you know, put them in those positions to, to, to get most of the reps. Um, I know we'll get into that as we kind of talk. But the other point, too, I wanted to say was, dude, the secondary, man, dude, that yeah. coverage, play recognition. Uh, and dude, it ain't just like one player or two players. I mean, dude, we got like eight guys who are like certified ballers in that secondary. Lock them um, down. Dude. Jay Rich, man, he got them boys coached up, man. They're dissecting plays fast, um, consistently in the right spot. Uh, the only nitpick I'll say about, about, about that group today is Broussard should have had that pick. And it ain't Broussard's mm-hmm. fault. It's Dixon's fault. And if you watch that play, dude, mm-hmm. Dixon comes from out of bounds to try to pick that <laughs> ball off. And, I'm, and, and you can see Cam just telling him, like, bro, I was right here. Like I had it. And, and, and Dixon comes like a bat out of hell from out of bounds and they end up running into each other. That would have been our first pick of the year. But uh, man, overall, dude, the defense, dude, showed up, showed out, man. Dixon really stepped up. I'll be honest. Like he's looking like a, a like a number one almost, you know, mm-hmm. I was, I, I was really, I was really impressed by it. Um, little surprised that we didn't see Justin Harrington. During the pregame warmups, the pregame announcements, they they called three safeties out. McKellistine, Bruce Sard, and Cam Fab. And I, I don't know, that's just new for us to be not calling out two safeties. And so that kind of struck me a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it must be with a couple guys, like probably three or four. They just kind of didn't want to put everything out there, it seemed like. Because, you know, it seemed it, Jed in his postgame press or not his postgame presser, but a couple of days after his uh, just kind of his recap, um, he talked about how uh, they were they were basically going to wait one more week um, and that these guys sh- could, you know, should be back here soon. Anyways, I digress. Mm. The secondary was lights out and we saw Coach Koo break down the the fact that. Belichick is going to trust his guys to go into man. And like we had said, there's kind of a no better group to trust to go into man than these three pretty big corners, like pretty physical corners. Thad, maybe a little less so. Um, but EJ, Ephesians, Prize Sock, those are guys that you can trust to get physical with with wide receivers. Thaddeus just straight up locked down his guys. I mean, I call, I tweeted it out after the first drive. It felt like 
there was no like, and I realized we're going to be playing against better receivers, but they, those guys were not getting any separation, just none mm-hmm. to be accounted for. I mean, it felt like going into the second half, despite us being up by just two touchdowns, 14 to nothing, they had no chance of scoring. They're lucky they got three on the board and that scripted drive. It is what it is. That's the first drive of the season with a bunch of new faces. Like Noah said, it's hard to be mad at a three point holding yeah. a team. Three points. Um, first off, I think the defensive line rotation was kind of fun to see, man. We played guys all over the front. I think that's what you're really going to see. Uh, not, not, not even just so much throughout the year, but you're really going to see that early. You're going to see a lot of different guys get a lot of opportunities. Um, but we quickly talked about, um, we talked about, multiple guys but the guy that i actually want to talk about is is isaiah ward um mm. dude when he fills out a little bit more man i'm telling you dude he is going to be an absolute game record i mean he's only 230 pounds but and, and he didn't really fill up the stat sheet all too much but he is so active i mean everything he does is is like with this like this motor that is just that is just going and going and and there's a play where he bursts off the line and like dives to, to make a tackle. And it's just, dude, we, we haven't had, you know, we've had try, you know, trice last year, he was very, you know, uh, he was like a technician, very strong brute force kind of had a couple moves. Dude, we haven't had an Isaiah Ward type defensive end man in a long time. And if he can just fill out, dude, he can be an absolute terror off the edge. The other guy I want to talk about is Deshaun Lynch. I'm still trying to, I'm still trying to really understand Deshaun Lynch, you know, six, five, uh, you know, 290 pounds, uh, dude, he, he, he has like that Braylon Trice power, but what, but he, he still kind of get in with the second rotation and I, but dude, the way he sets the edge and can make plays is something I really, really am looking forward to. Um, but the last thing I want to say, and then I'll kick it over to Izzo to talk a little bit about defensive line, but I want to say this too, Bandez and Valdez, they kind of got, dude, that offensive line for Weber state kind of got up into him a couple different times early on. But but you could tell when they were going to the sidelines, you know, the coaches were coaching them up and they came back and they kind of settled in and they started making big time plays. Valdez made a couple TFLs. I think he had one at least uh, and, and was in on another one. I think I think once those guys kind of get in game, um, you know, experience, I think the game will slow down a little bit to them. I don't care what anyone says, man. You go from a Montana State type uh, schedule for the first couple of years and all of a sudden you're playing big boy D1 football. You know, I I get that this is, you know, a little bit lower, but dude, allowing these guys to really settle in and let the game, you know, them to trust their eyes that we've talked about in the past will be huge for them. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I was hot. I had picked on uh, Bandez and Valdez to highlight as well. I I thought that they they really kind of short. Uh, you love to see when your defensive line re- is receptive to coaching. And the two studs in the middle are receptive to coaching. Then they make the adjustment in the second half. So I I really love that. I mean, they're a huge reason why, you know, you hold this team to what was it? 98 yards passing. So it wasn't, it wasn't even just the, the, against the run. They were causing pressure up the middle, disrupting the play, had to get the ball out quick. Um, It's just, you love to see that from the guys who you kind of view in the, at least in the front end as the leaders on the defensive line. And in terms of an age standpoint, um, so you love that. And and to your point about Ward, man, I mean, uh, what was what I don't think I was prepared for, or at least didn't expect was Ward graded out as I think the highest grade in PFF with a 90.6 against the rush. Oh, wow. As a smaller guy, as a smaller is a maybe somebody who you would say is like an undersized edge player, maybe a linebacker type. Um, and for him to be that disruptive in the, in the run game is, is huge for us. Um, especially if they're going to be targeting outside of the tackle, if they're going to start running the ball outside of the tackle, which is where they were effective. And they, it looked like they schemed away from the ward. Mm. So that'll be interesting to see. I loved what I saw from Durfee. Um, I know, you know, uh, he had went just like Wayne, he had a cut. I think he had a couple pass deflections or he himself had two and, and, uh, Wayne had one or vice versa. Um, mm-hmm. you just love to see edge play guys being not only, not only guys that you can depend on to get pressure, but also athletic enough to bat a ball down like oh, in open space. Durfee's was in open space. Wayne's was in open space. We're not talking about like, he's just staring down the guy coming, you know, on a quick slant and they stick their hand up and get lucky. 
Um, just two athletic plays. And I love to see that. Um, you know, a, a name that didn't get brought up that was very conspicuous while I was watching was Butler, the D tackle. Yeah. He uh-huh. seemed to be, he seemed to wreak a lot of havoc. And um, I was really, really happy to see that because he was one of the first guys that committed to this, the staff and he's a big boy too. He's a 300 pounder. And I was, I was happy to see him making plays and standing out. Yeah. Amen. What yeah, he, was like one that you weren't really expecting for sure. I mean, at least I wasn't. And, and he showed up. Yeah. He, I mean, he kind of got lost four, in the shuffle. Yeah. He had four tackles and a, and a tackle for loss too. Mm-hmm. But Mike, to your point, he was creating havoc in the backfield every single time he was in, man. You yeah, look good. I, I can't wait to see what he does against uh big temp play when we start getting against these, these big boys. You know, now, a big a last thing on this before we move on. Um, because of how many guys rotated in, we had 27 guys on defense play mm-hmm. football yesterday wow. or on Saturday. Um, you're going to have to rely on your eyes to pick up on a lot of players who are standing out because they rotate so much. You're not going to see a ton of stat stuffing, you know, outside of probably Tupatala, Cam Fab, uh, and, and Bruner. You're not going to see them play the entire game through. So, I mean, even Cam Fab, maybe not. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting year. It's not going to be like, hey, you know, Eddie had 11 tackles today. He's our player of the game. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. But it also helps that these guys just really weren't on the field for very long. There wasn't a lot of defensive plays. Yeah. So. You know, it's funny that you say that because I was looking at the tackle totals and our two inside linebackers, uh, Tupatala and uh, Bruner, both led the team in tackles. Six, right? But one, one, yeah, Bruner had six, Tupatala had five, or was the other way around. Um, way that the linebackers played was it, w- it was solid. I thought, I thought at the beginning of the game, there was a little, they were really amped up. I thought we saw over pursuit, and I thought with defensive linemen, we saw them kind of not staying in their gaps. And we were talking yep. about how important that is to Belichick's defense that people play sound when you're watching the linebackers uh what particularly stuck out to you yeah i mean tubatala is just he he's just a menace in the past game man <laughs> like i know that's stealing from noah last year with the menace but that uh that is what he was i mean four four qb pressures uh he got attributed for one of those is a sack one of those is a batted ball um it, he definitely was an issue for them and a big reason why they weren't efficient in the past game. So um, to me, you know, I mean, I wasn't in person, but from a TV copy, it did look like Zoe had a better game than, than Bruner. Um, not, not, not so much that Bruner had a bad game, but Zoe, I mean, Zoe was everywhere, man. It mm-hmm, seemed like yeah. even if he didn't make the play, he was there. Um, it seemed like he was calling out the defense a lot. I mean, he was, he, he was everywhere in that game. Uh, dude, the thing with Bruner, man, there's going to be plays you watch him where you're like, Dude, it looks like you know he, he didn't get to his uh, gap, or he you know he he got, he got beat around the edge. And dude, he's not gonna he's not gonna always wow you with this like crazy elite athleticism. But the thing with Carson Bruner, man, he is elite, he has an elite nose and knack for the ball. My point is, is just you can definitely tell the two guys who really have solidified themselves in fall camp, and it's Bruner and Zoe. Um, because I mean, dude, those guys played a ton, and I think you'll see them play a ton uh, throughout the year as well. Okay, man. Okay. okay. Yeah. The I wanted to talk linebackers on one thing too that that I, I didn't mention. Um, dude, at one point there was six linebackers on the field and no defensive linemen. Yeah, uh, dude, <laughs> on every like third down and more than yeah. 10, they were standing up over the guard, over the center. They were moving and you could tell those the, the, those big old offensive linemen were like, oh, damn it. You know, who, who, who do you got? I got this guy. No, no, wait. Switch said I got this guy. And so but we talked about this with Kamori House, but, you know, they, they, when they do this Zoom package, he's extremely tough to block, man. They brought him in. He was one of the inside rushers. Dude, he's so low, low to the ground. He easily could have had two sacks. He drew a hold on one and he barely got tripped up on another. He is solidifying himself a, a, as a guy who's definitely in that four man rotation. All right. We're going to move on to the secondary. And I'm going to say a couple numbers to you guys. And I want you to respond to them 11 for 32 for 98. Izzo, how does that make you feel as uh, somebody who we worried about the secondary last year a little bit? Yeah. 11 for 32 is so exciting. I mean, <laughs> they trusted him man to man coverage, dude. And you can't, they couldn't do a thing. I, now, the comp level of competition is not lost upon me. 
Like we're going to play way better receivers than this, but this is definitely trending in the correct, in the right direction. Thaddeus, like we'd said, went nuts. If looked great on his plays, he looks like a ball Hawk. Shaw was in there a lot. Uh, they just could not get open, man. Just, I don't know if there's much more to say about it. Yeah. These I guys were that. so overmatched. I mean, I, I honestly think that EJ is a guy who could play himself into the NFL. I think Thaddeus is too. Um, he could definitely Bryce find Hawk. himself a role. Yeah. If is an obvious one, he projects to be like a first round, second round guy. So, I mean, yeah, we talk, we talk so much about like kind of like our outside corners and then our safeties that we kind of forget about our nickel, man. I mm-hmm. mean, Dude, I, I know, I know, is that you just mentioned Jordan Shaw? I mean, he's everything we've been hearing, man. Tough, physical, just outright nasty. Um, he wasn't really tested that much in this game, but you can just see it, man. I mean, everything he does is just, is just he's just locked in. Um, but I really want to mention McCutcheon, though, man. McCutcheon Ooh, played good call, great. good call. And I think, and I think that somebody, I think that's something like I have like a little bit later is kind of a sleepy player in the game. But dude, I mean, I, I have a hard time seeing McCutcheon, un, uh, you know, unseat, you know, Shaw for that starting nickel role. But knowing that you have him, you know, Kutch right behind him, dude, he played great, man. And it's like, I'm telling you guys, bro, I, I tweeted this out during the game, but West Coast DBU is back, man. And what's wild is, man, some of those young pups back in the kennel might even be just as talented or even more than yeah. some of the guys we got on the field. Um, the future is bright, man. Jay Rich for president, baby. Jay Rich 2024. Let's go. <laughs> That's fun. Come on, That's Jay Rich. Fun. I love that. <laughs> All right. Anything else you guys want to add about the secondary? Um, it was great to see Dunn out there crack somebody. It was good to see Vincent Holmes out there after, you know, entering the portal, coming back in, and that being the last one at, you know, they called him back essentially out of the portal to come back to UW. So that was that was awesome to see him getting in the mix. Uh Mikel Steen, man, he he looked great. You know, uh, 51 cover snaps, you know, he, he just, he looks the part too. So I really nothing, a whole lot negative you can say about the secondary in this game. I got a question for you guys. Have you ever wanted to walk into Husky stadium where there's 70,000 people and be the best looking person in the stadium? If you have, make sure you go to simply Seattle, hit that QR code. Our good friends at simply Seattle hooked us up and we look great. You see that QR code? Make sure you snap that, go check it out, get all the Husky gear you want, plus Mariners, Sonics, Storm, all that stuff, everything at Simply Seattle. While you're at it, be sure to check out the Dub Dub Discord community with over 2,700 members. It's the largest organized chat room for all things Washington Husky athletics. You want insider access? Our VIP membership unlocks exclusive chat rooms and rumors you won't find anywhere else. Hit the QR code on the screen and join the conversation today. Go dogs. Thank you for everything. All right, fellas. Uh, we kind of broke down position by position what was going on. Let's start talking about the players that are highlighted on defense. Um, you know, I think I'm going to start with Izzo on this one. Izzo, standout players. I'm just going to I'm going to cop out a little bit here and just say all of the two two deep three deep defensive linemen that that showed um that sh- that showed what we can be excited about while we do this rotational defense. You know, your your Butlers, your Deshaun Lynch, Hel- Void Tanufi got half a sack on the Tupatala sack. Um yeah, Lane, all those guys. I it, it was just it's really encouraging to see Steve Belichick trusting the two deeps and the three deeps. So maybe it's a half kudos, half to Belichick for executing the game plan for utilizing player strengths and kudos to those guys for showing up. I recognize it's hard to not mention the obvious that this is far below the level of talent that we will see, you know, going forward, but it's not going to take away from the fact that guys showed up and did their job again, just like, just like we called out on the offense, Will Rogers, you, you know, Enoch, those guys in the two deeps and three deeps on the defensive line and out on the outside at edge, those guys showed up too. Okay. Okay. No. Man, I think I got to go with, dude, Elenius Davis, man. When he had an opportunity to be, yes, dude, to be in the game, dude, he was just a force in the middle. Uh, you know, he, dude, he's really like reshaped his body too. I mean, he came in, mm-hmm. not, you know, 
And dude, he just, I mean, he looks lean, but big, man. And I just love the leverage he plays at. Um, you know, he, he always has low pad level. If I didn't know any better, I'd think he was like a heavyweight wrestler coming out of high school or something, because I mean, he is just, he dude, he just knows how to use his body. He knows how to just, just er everything about him is, is, is just fun to watch as, as an, as an ex defensive lineman. I think he um, was, uh, I think he was a wrestler too. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he reminds, I mean, that, that that's, that's the way it reminds you is just like a big, just a big old heavyweight wrestler. Um, all right. Tristan Dunn. I know Ooh. he got a. I know he got a game ball. I know he hasn't really cracked that secondary rotation per se. But what I love about him, he's doing everything he can to help the team on special teams. Amen. And to me, man, that just that epitomizes what like uh, being a dog is about. Yeah. Hey, man, I haven't cracked that rotation yet, but the coaches want me to be that piss missile coming down the field and absolutely killing somebody on kickoff. You know, I'm doing everything I can on punt return, whatever, whatever it may be, right? So. I, I, I want to give it, if I had a game ball, I'd give him one too for that. Uh, yeah, I just love his tenacity uh, and just, just, just his toughness. Um, and then the third one I kind of mentioned, when we were talking secondary is Dyson McCutcheon, man. He just looks so much more comfortable out there than even I was expecting. Um, and I just really look forward to seeing his growth because I, I think he has all the tools, ball skills, everything to be an elite player in our secondary. So it's just fun to see um, just kind of his ability and growth uh, as, as we've moved forward here. His dad was fairly good at football too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. so, so he's got a good pedigree too. Then he does. He does. He does. All right. For me, I already mentioned Butler Wayne, but you know who actually keeps playing conspicuous ball every time he gets on the field, and that's Jacob Lane. Mm. Jacob Lane is one of these My guys guy. that like it might not. This may not have shown up in the stat sheet, but I could see the pressure that he's getting on the quarterback, and I feel like we're starting to see that pop up all over the defense like we how many different defensive linemen did we just name in the last 15 20 minutes that had big games we didn't do that last 15 year. defensive linemen or something like that is crazy we we didn't do that last year we had Thule and then everybody else was kind of a step down now everybody is starting to play at this high level and going into big 10 play we got to be excited about that one thing my brother dozer brought up to me that i didn't think about until afterwards because it was so smooth was did you guys notice we, there wasn't a lot of missed tackles last year? Yeah. We complained all year Dude, about that's a missed great, tackles. That's a great point, bro. Yeah, that's a great and point. shout out Dozer. Great yeah, shout out Dozer. Yeah, it, there was the missed the them cleaning up the missed tackles mm. speaks a lot to what this staff has done. And I'm man, it makes it doesn't give me agita anymore. So I'm feeling good about it. Dude, I love uh, that. Dude, hold on. I gotta ask this question. Izzo will laugh at this, but is a is 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 Jacob Lane gonna be the Ryan Bowman like in my heart as much? As <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> dude, I used to tell everybody, dude, I don't care what I don't care what you say. Ryan Bowman's the best yeah, defensive yeah. line that we have. Like, if I don't you care have an intrusive thought. <laughs> it, it might be something crazy. Noah's sitting there just thinking about Ryan Bowman. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that was me. That was yeah. me. <laughs> That's hilarious. Now, question, guys, is there anything else you guys want to cover or bring up about the uh the defensive performance for UW? Is uh, I'm going to go before I, I, I'm going to say it this way. <clears throat> this is a little bit of a bigger, broader scope of looking at our secondary. We talk about DBU, you know, being that, you know, we're, we're the West Coast DBU. But, dude, how fortunate are we as a Seattle sports fan to have the secondary we have on Montlake and the secondary we have in, for the Seahawks, too? Big talk. Hey, big facts. Dude, I mean, Dude, we saw it with the Legion of Boom, just how that type of secondary can set the tone. We have both like young Legion of Booms coming up, you know, through both of the, both of these, uh, you know, both of these programs. It's just, I don't know. It was something I was thinking about today, man, with Spoon and, you know, and, and, Woolen. and Reek. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Reek Woolen. And you have Kobe Bryant on the, you know, I know this isn't a Seahawks podcast, but I'm just saying like, dude, like <laughs> dude, we got, we got some two nasty secondaries in, in both of these teams, man. So it's kind of exciting. Well I hope you guys enjoyed everything that you saw. Like I said, make sure you guys go join the Discord. For myself, Mike Flaunt, that's Izzo. That's Noah. We are dubbed up. Go dogs.